So, Professor Niels Harrett, you examined the rubble that came from the World Trade Center. What did you find in it? Well, in there we find remains of what we characterize as a thermitic material. And this is a very energetic material which can be used either for melting iron or it can be designed as an explosive. So what effect would the nanothermite have had on the collapse of the towers on September the 11th? Actually, within the group of authors behind this paper, which we published in April, there are diverging opinions about what this nanothermite was used for. And in my opinion, we should not speculate in a, in a scenario for the demolition. But there's no doubt that the three towers were demolished on 9-11. Uh, so, um, but beyond that, there is very solid evidence for that some thermite has been used for melting the steel beams. We should not, I do not know, we do not know if the thermite that we have found is the same thermite which has been used for melting the beams. It's very, very possible that different varieties was used, and I personally am certain that uh, conventional explosives were used too in abundance. And when you say in abundance, how much do you mean? Tons. Hundred tons. So many, not, many, many tons. We're not just talking about nanothermite, in fact, we're talking about both nanothermite and conventional explosives used in large quantities. Yeah, but we have not found remains or transits of conventional explosives. Actually, we have suggested and recommended to NIST, which is a National Institute of Standards and Technology, that they should look for remains or traces of explosives, and they have refused to do so every time. They have not investigated it. And in terms of the nanothermite, the traces of which you did find, uh, what are the possible explanations for its presence in the World Trade Center? I mean, could it have been in the aeroplanes? Is it, could it have been a naturally occurring substance in any way? Well, I, the two last questions or options I can definitely rule out. It cannot have come from the aeroplanes. And, well, if it had been there on beforehand, those who put it there, I th urge them to step forward and tell us how and why it got there. Uh, one thing which has been very mentioned frequently in the discussion following our publication is that this could be the primer paint which was applied to the steel beams in order to prevent corrosion. And uh, much of the, many of the ingredients are the same in terms of iron oxide, as I told you which is the red color you see on steel beams usually when it's protected, it's the, the iron oxide. So some of the chemicals in which was applied to the steel beams in order to prevent corrosion. And uh, much of the, many of the ingredients are the same in terms of iron oxide, as I told you, which is the red color you see on steel beams usually when it's protected, it's the, the iron oxide. So some of the chemicals in there are the same. But the composition of the primer paint used, there are two very good reasons for this not being paint, in my opinion. One is that the, the, the composition, chemical composition of the paint, primer paint used in World Trade Center, according to NIST, the National Institute of Standards and Technology, is vastly different from what we, we are seeing. To be specific, I say we are missing large amounts of chromium and, and um, uh, zinc and magnesium.
Next, which can be understood by everyone, is that the paint applied on the steel beams are stable to elevated temperatures. NIST did experiments with the steel beams because they wanted to use the, the appearance of the paint as a measure for the temperature the steel beams had been exposed to. And let me be specific. So when you heat up this steel beam at 250 degrees centigrade, it starts cracking. And this is because the steel expands more than the paint. So they get what they call mod cracks. And it keep on cracking until a temperature of about 650 degrees, where it starts peeling off, forming scales. This continues to about 800 degrees when, uh, when this scaling becomes extensive, uh, what you say, excessive. But it does not burn. So the paint on the steel beams is stable beyond 800 degrees centigrade. Now the stuff we have found ignites at 430 degrees centigrade. So it is not the primer paint. So what I can say is, is this nanothermite? Well, it quacks like a duck, it waddles like a duck, it looks like a duck, maybe it's a duck. This is all we can say.